In this video I will show you the Asian end game strategy in the end, it's going to be very satisfying, so make sure to watch to the end. So in this video I'm playing 4 player fixed card game with balance blitz dice rolls and 60 seconds per turn, with alliances on. My opponents are 2 grandmaster rank players who are purple and green, and 1 beginner rank player who is blue. This game is being played with my subscribers, so I know I'm playing against decent people here, nobody of them will be dumb to suicide for whatever reasons like it happens playing in public lobbies with strangers, so I know we will be able to make our moves more freely, actually the best of the best of our moves. I won't be able to get a small continent in this game it seems, and it can be very bad playing with decent players, because most likely they are going to target me in order to get rid of the fourth player who is not really needed in the game. Well, sometimes they just tend to turtle as well, so actually I don't know how it goes this time. For now my plan is to go for Europe, not sure if the players let me hold it, but let's hope for the best. If I see that I'm getting targeted then I will try to come up with something. But for now I might still try and get Europe, actually I'm really wondering if the blue player attacks green. As if they are busy with each other, then only having to guard from purple I might be good. Or I mean I could even potentially take South America from green if the blue player wants to team up. Well, he doesn't. I suggested blue to attack green, but he just captured Africa for himself, moving the troops from the green player's border. So I assume they have made an alliance between themselves as well. I mean not necessary, but the main thing is in that, that it's clear that they won't attack each other as the green player didn't invade blue into his unguarded border either. I don't really like the fact that the green player moved his four troops in Europe, but so far I don't know whether he did this in order to prevent me from capturing Europe, or whether he thought that I was going to switch to going for North America instead, since I put my army into Iceland. But he sent me an alliance request, and now I clearly showed that I'm going for Europe by capturing all the territories in it except his four troops. So we will actually see what he is up to. I don't appreciate that the blue player attacked a territory of the continent which I go for, when he could have just captured the territory of green. So I assume he is a fake ally, and will try to get rid of me as the fourth player since I'm going for the biggest continent. And it makes sense as well as for green to put even more troops to Europe, I noticed that he is a fake ally too. In one of the recent subscriber games in which I was going for Europe, I've got drastically teamed up by other players, so I immediately lost. So this time I'm going to act quickly, I won't just sit here doing nothing when they still are not quite stronger than me, meaning that I could still save myself from getting eliminated first. So this is why I invaded blue and green leaving my army into South America, I've got really lucky that they weren't guarding against each other at all so I lost no troops doing so. And I'm even more happy that the green player decided to expand so drastically, capturing both of the Americas while not being able to properly guard the borders. So because he decided to expand so fast, that led the other two players start paying attention to him, while forget about me. So after all my situation probably isn't as bad as I thought. The player who is in the most of danger is probably green, his troops are split into a few different armies around all the map, so one of us could crush his one army, another player has another army, so then he would become relatively weak and could be taken out not quite hardly. I hope he will be intimidated enough to move his army out of South America, so I would be able to capture it, and finally have a continent for the first time ever this game. I'm really glad that the purple player keeps invading green. He is the only person to successfully hold a continent, and additionally the border from him is not really being guarded much. So I'm glad that he doesn't rely on other opponents, but actually is interested to get rid of the player who goes for the biggest continent as well as others. And I'm even more glad that the blue player crushed green's 10 troops army in Africa. Having a 10 troops set, I was going to crush his another 10 troops army too, but since he moved it out, I decided not to, especially when other players can invade him easily from other borders too. The purple player is the safest person to make attacks being the Australian player and only having one border to guard. 
while I was possibly afraid of the green player's retaliation after me losing quite a bunch of troops crushing his army, and then for him trading in a set. So I didn't want to invade him into North America before he traded in a set, but now after he did, I was completely safe to do so, and that's why I did it, I invaded him into North America leaving my army in the territory of Central America, so he wouldn't be able to recapture it. So I'm not only finally collaborated to attack the green player, but at the same time I made it impossible for green to recapture it. So now we should not be worried that he gets to hold North America somehow. It's just impossible. So unless the blue and purple players stop attacking him and start focusing on me instead. But I think it would be very unlikable when we almost destroyed green. In 4 player fixed card games one of the main player's goal should be to get rid of the 4th player as soon as possible, in order for the game not to be dragged out. As when all the players in the game know the secret of turtling, then it just doesn't work anymore, the game just then stagnates. So I think we are getting to the point when he will get eliminated, it probably wouldn't be a good idea for either me, blue, or purple to suddenly switch to attacking each other, so the green player would possibly be able to come back to the game and be a decent opponent again. Especially when all three of us are equally strong, meaning that nobody would get a significant advantage after one of us taking green, the balance of the game would stay perfectly sustained. And here we go, here we go guys. We have finally got rid of the green player. Well, I will admit that I attacked him the least, but on the other hand I did my part by invading him and leaving my army into North America making it possible for him to recapture it. And also I was the one who took South America. But looking from another perspective blue and purple had many more territories than me too, getting more troops as well. So at the end I didn't end up quite stronger even with making less attacks, in fact the blue player is the strongest one, but I haven't gotten the opportunity to trade in my sets yet. The purple player wanted to team up with me on blue, but I thought that I will rather possibly team up with blue on purple. So this is why I said to attack my territory if need to to blue, hoping that he captures Europe, while lets me have North America, so then we would be able to crush all the troops from these continents we get to the purple player equally, so one of us could finally take him out, without giving the game away for another one. Well, to be honest I didn't make it very obvious for the blue player that I want to use this strategy against purple, so the next following turns I will try making the blue player realize that. And how could I have teamed with purple, is to invade blue into Africa leaving my army there. So he wouldn't be able to recapture it, as that would just make the balance of the game to be broken. But before doing that I really want to do the strategy when one of the players captures both of the Americas and another player captures Africa plus Europe, so then they use all the troops they get to crush into the Australian player. So if possible, I will rather try to pull off this strategy, as it highly increases your chances of not getting the third place, assuming you're playing with not suicidical players. The purple player was smart to invade me into North America, but before that I told Blue to attack my territory if you need to indicating that he can capture Europe, so let's see if he understands my message. Well, probably not, he captures my territories in North America too, and it really seemed that he wanted to invade me into South America as well. So I think he doesn't really want to team up, and instead of it would prefer that we all three would attack each other as much as possible, or that the blue player doesn't know the strategy I was talking about at all. So in this case, in one way or another, when we do not team up, but instead of that go with the option to attack each other as much as possible, I obviously have to invade blue, leaving my armies in the territories of North Africa and Central America, so he wouldn't be able to get any continental troop bonuses, and that we would be able to conclude the game much more faster. We need that we would have less and less troops each turn, as the bigger amount of troops on the board makes the game longer, when the smaller amount of troops on the board makes the game faster. So I better hope we won't end up in the stage of game when we have hundreds of troops each, as then we will be able to make basically the same exact moves we can do now, so the game would just become dragged out and we will have to start attacking each other a lot anyways, so we could finally conclude the game.
In the situation when one of the players has Australia, another one South America, and the third one doesn't have any continent at all, I assume it's better to be the Australian player, as obviously the former African player won't be happy that the South American player doesn't let holding the continent anymore, so more likely that no continent player will want to target the South American player, trying to regain the continent or just not being satisfied with that player in overall. While the Australian player could feel quite safer, is first of all he only has one border to guard anyways, and second of all the former African player most likely won't target him as much since he doesn't have a big reason to be mad on him. So the Australian player can even help attacking the South American player, since he knows that the former African player most likely will want to team up on him. Well, currently I'm the strongest player, so obviously it makes sense for them to focus on me either way so the balance of the game wouldn't be broken. After trading in a set I only had 31 troops less than both of them combined, so if the purple player had been blocked in Australia, then potentially I could have tried taking the blue player out of the game and used the four continents end game strategy against purple. The strategy which you use against blocked Australian player, when you capture both of the Americas, Africa, and Europe, and only have three borders to guard, the territories of Ukraine, Middle East, and either Alaska or Kamchatka, so since the Australian player is being blocked, you get a ton of troops that turn. But yeah, since the purple player wasn't blocked, the 31 troop disadvantage isn't something that I wanted to risk. Especially with not being able to trade in a set in the same turn after taking the blue player out. So I think if I had tried taking out the blue player back then, then I would have very likely lost the game. Anyways. I'm really glad that the purple player brought the attention from me to himself by capturing Asia, so now I might not be that big of a target, after the blue player invading purple into Asia by himself, and then capturing Europe while putting his troops inside of Europe rather than on its borders. So I think the blue player doesn't want to attack or manual roll me as much anymore. Well, let's see what the purple player does now after I let blue hold Europe. Well, he just captured Asia. So let's see if the blue player invades him, well, he didn't. So not sure guys, should I try invading them both, or just try capturing North America, which I think would be invaded anyways. Well, I'm still the strongest player, so I think it will be the best to keep being him, rather than letting players to catch up to me. And obviously it would be just hilarious to let someone hold Asia either way. The purple player has actually played very smartly by not invading us into our continents last turn. As he made to not only invade him, but the blue player as well. So now he can attack me again, and encourage the blue player to do the same, since now I'm being portrayed as both of their enemy. But on the other hand I'm still the strongest player, so that makes sense for them to keep focusing on me, but not for so long, my advantage is being smaller and smaller every turn, so the strongest player's position might be taken by someone else soon. So anyways, let's just recapture Africa and not invade the blue player into Europe once again to see that the purple player does. By not invading blue I don't want to drag out the game. What I want is to make the purple player invade the blue player as well. So they wouldn't be such good buddies anymore, as if we remember the blue player even let purple hold Asia a couple of turns back, meaning that he isn't willing to attack purple as much as me, so my biggest goal is to change that. The blue player still keeps manual rolling me, so let's try sending him an alliance request, maybe that will help out to me for a little bit. As I don't really like when both of the players attack me, I would absolutely rather prefer to team up with one of them on another one instead. So what I want to do now, is to try pulling off the strategy, when I would be holding both of the Americas, and the blue player Europe plus Africa, so we would be able to crush all the troops we get to purple making him lose the game and with us having an equal endgame. So I'm just not sure of the blue player understands my message once again on what do I want to do. Or even if he was willing to do so at all. Well, actually I'm very glad that the purple player has decided to invade me, at the same time crushing quite a bit of my troops. As I was quite stronger than blue, so now when I and blue become more or less equally strong, the blue player might be more willing to team up with me, 
especially with the purple player invading them as well. So let's actually see if the blue player captures Africa right now, well at one point it seemed he wanted to still manual roll me, but after all he decided to capture Africa. Or I mean maybe the blue player wanted to create an illusion for the purple player that he still wants to attack me, hmm. I know that the blue player can still attack me into North America even with letting him hold these two continents, but let's just hope for the best. And wow, I'm really glad that the purple player invaded blue into Europe while failing to reach North America. As it really seemed it made the blue player mad because he was the only one invaded. And after all, I'm so glad that the blue player didn't invade me into North America by himself, after the purple player failing to do so. So who knows, I might even take the advantage of this situation rather than trying to mutually team up with Blue. Well, it all depends what the purple player does, and how the blue player reacts. Well, that's interesting. I like that the purple player is being aggressive and invades both of us, as after all I think more damage is being made for Blue rather than me. Or if we look from the diplomacy perspective, then he makes the blue player to be mad on him, while makes blue to trust me even more. Well, the purple player has come up with a great decision to potentially make me to betray blue. That was a smart decision to leave his army in North America, so I wouldn't be able to recapture it. But before I consider invading blue, let's see if the purple player invades the blue player by himself. So in this case I would be able to keep very good relationships with Blue. As you can see I took Australia from Purple, while specially moving all of my troops out from South America, so the Purple player would be able to take it from me, and at the same time invade the Blue player into his continents as well. If the Purple player hadn't invaded Blue, then I would have been forced to invade the Blue player by myself, maybe even completely crushing one of my armies if the Blue player kept guarding. But thank god the purple player invaded blue by himself. And with him putting his army into Brazil, that led me to come up with a naughty plan, which made us to become in the same situation again, just with me and purple switching continents. And for the purple player to get out of the very isolated place, he was forced to move out from it attacking firstly through the blue player's continents that I think the blue player didn't appreciate once again and become even more annoyed of purple. But probably it was a good decision for Purple to move out anyways, as with him staying in South America and without Blue invading me into North America, after a few turns I might have gotten a good advantage by already having a lot of territories, so then I might have even been able to successfully take the Purple player out, and still win in the endgame with the Blue player by attacking him first. But who knows how that would have gone, we will never know now. It seems the purple player has made a really good work balancing the game out, as now I won't be getting as many troops by not having that many territories at all as I used to. So well done purple. I'm really glad that the blue player didn't capture Europe this turn, meaning that I can stay with him as good allies since I don't have to invade him. I also like that he fortified that army out of blocked place to the upper Asia next to purple's territories, meaning that he might be looking forward to take the purple player out, I'm not sure yet, but that's possible, so I would like to stay as loyal allies with blue, especially when I'm getting more troops. So after all maybe it will be me who takes the purple player out, and then with the biggest blue player's army being totally blocked. I will be potentially able to take over both of the Americas and hold them for a one turn, like in case I would still have less troops than blue after taking the purple player out. So I'm not sure how about you guys, but I'm finally really like the situation where I'm not being the one who gets targeted, I wish I got quite more troops than the blue player though, basically we have the same number of territories, so we get the same number of troops for that, and when it comes to continents I only get one more troop. So in overall, I only get one more troop than him. Anyways, I have just cleared out Purple's territories of Europe, not to only increase the number of territories I have and at the same time to get more troops, but that it would be easier for Blue to take the Purple player out, I see he might be very tempted to do so. And OMG, OMG guys. I cannot believe that the Blue player has actually taken Purple. I mean it wouldn't been that much terrible of the decision if he hadn't had his biggest army blocked. 
so in that case he might have been potentially able to get a good blitz rolls having the attacker advantage. But in this case I not only have more troops and cards than him, but I could get the attacking advantage too. Now I actually have two different ways to win guys. The boring one is to just simply take him out in a single turn, and the interesting one is to keep him blocked in Africa and capture Asia while properly guarding all three borders. And you can see guys which way I have chosen. The interesting one. I want to show the Asian endgame strategy which you could use against stronger opponents. In this case the blue player was obviously weaker, but this is what you can actually do against the strongest blocked opponents and still win. It's a very satisfying strategy indeed. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, then I would recommend checking some of these out as well. Watching more videos will help you to progress so much faster. Highly increase your skills by simply watching risk videos.